Hey guys, it's Gil. I'm here with Bob Carr, Bob Carr Designs in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, no. Bob is an abstract expressionist, does some beautiful work. We're going to look at that work. We're going to kind of go through some of that work as we're talking. Um, and again, this is second edition of the Alabama Out in Five. So this is going to be more of what it's about is, is introducing you to artists of Alabama and of different cuts, different kinds of artists. So again, we're just going to get into it and talk about it a little bit. So thanks, Bob, for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you. So Bob, let me ask you a couple of questions. And, and again, it's, it's, it's relaxed, so don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Well, you call yourself an abstract expressionist. What, where'd you get that from? What, why do you why do you define yourself as that type of artist? I I believe it's because of just you know I was I've been influenced through the years by a lot of different type of artists that the abstract expressionists uh, like Basquiat, uh, Lichtenstein, uh, Rothko. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot up here that, need, that, <laughs> that needs to get out here, <laughs> and uh, I think that's that's why I consider myself an expressionist because that, that this is how I sort of cope with uh, what's going on in here and up here, and I just sort of just put it out onto the canvas. Or uh, it's good what, therapy. It is great therapy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it's gotten to the point now when you know, especially during the pandemic, I don't didn't have access to a lot of canvases so now i'm trying different things like painting on wood painting on cardboard yeah i actually love painting on cardboard <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it amazing when you change your substrate and and change the idea of we're all framed in okay you literally framed in a canvas and that yeah. square and all sure when you change your substrate it, it changes your perception of what you're doing and how to how to do it it's it's great fun yeah i love it yeah yeah so um, you use a lot of color. I mean, he uses a lot of beautiful colors in this. So, you you know, we're, we're saying this is therapy, and most artists will agree it's therapy, getting out darks and lights out of your system. But sure. yours is all bright colors, bright colors. So I would assume your therapy is all good getting out. So it's nothing yeah. bad or dark to your. Not so, really. Yeah. No. You know, I, I like I said, I guess I, I guess I had a happy child. <laughs> <laughs> And we are in his childhood home, which is really cool in Birmingham. So that's that's the other thing I love coming into homes like this that, that have been through generations. So, um, so what got you into art? What what kind of you know? Tell me a little bit about your background from beginning to end, real quick. I can remember as far back, probably as five or six years old, actually sitting in this room. Oh, how uh, cool! I had a little school desk that an old neighbor had given us, and that was my art desk up until I got too big for it. And I actually still have the desk. It's here in the house somewhere. Uh, but my parents were fantastic. They oh, I love always, I love that. always encouraged me. My mother was my, I think she was one of my, my biggest fans. She always encouraged my art. She, she never poo-pooed anything that I did. She didn't say, I don't get that or I don't understand that. My dad just loved my work. He was, uh, you know, I just have a very supportive family. Even my sister today, I mean, she's one of my biggest fans. She loves my work. And yeah, from there, I mean, I was obsessed with constantly drawing. I used to get in trouble at school uh, when uh, I would get bored with the classes. Yeah. And I would start drawing. I remember <laughs> I, I drew this elaborate little mural around the border of my test, the one of my tests, and I got in so much trouble. And I remember the teacher uh, sent a letter home to my mother saying, "Bob must stop drawing in the margins of his test." <laughs> she never said anything like, yeah. "Don't do that." Nothing. It was nothing. So I mean, I just I had to get it out. And yeah. I'm still like that whenever I have to do a doodle. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And so from then on, I mean, through my teen years, I was, you know, I started taking painting. I actually studied um, traditional style paintings. I took lessons from a little lady out in Trustful when I was about 14, 15 years old. And uh, she taught me the basics of, you know, like the still lifes, uh, landscapes, which was beautiful. And I, I did some really nice work and it was, it was lovely. I knew then something just kind of clicked. I was like, this is not me. It just doesn't feel yeah. right. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I want to explore it. 
and I did taught you technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I from then on I started experimenting and I started looking at different artists. You know, at the time when I was in high school, I think that was the time of uh, like Keith Caring, Basquiat, Andy Warhol. That's when they were really big in New York. Eighties boy. Eighties, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I really, you know, that influenced me a lot. Even down here in Birmingham, Alabama, in like nineteen eighty something, you know. Um, I really got into that, and uh, I dabbled into different, you know, figure drawings, and I, I think the whole pop culture aspect started coming into it also because I loved fashion. Even yeah. in high school, I loved uh, drawing very elongated figures, and you know, the '80s fashion with the shoulder pads, with the shoulder pads, the, the, the Joan Cup, but yeah, Yes, I'm obsessed with that. Uh, so today, I'm still obsessed. You're with making that me flashback. <laughs> you are seriously <laughs> making me flashback. I love that kind of stuff. So yeah, from then on, and then I started going to uh, after high school, I studied design at uh, Jeff State, and I met this fantastic professor. Uh, a German woman, named, uh, I think she was Dr. Fraka Collinson, and she taught the uh, design courses at uh, Jeff State, and she taught me so much. Uh, we did a variety from uh, like sculpture to uh, figure drawing to fashion designs, and uh, she she was a great mentor. I really admired that woman. I think she had a big influence on me at that point because that was like nineteen. 85, 86, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I was just, I didn't know what I was doing at that point. I just knew I had to, I had this creative energy, and in her classes, I was able to uh, do that, release yeah. that energy, and so from then on, I just started doing uh, freelance type work, you know, just kept painting, um, and then I stumbled into teaching, I never imagined that I would be working with children. I love children, but I never see, I s never saw myself as being... Uh, Wait, what age? Mm -hmm. They started at, from preschool up until like uh, 12 years, 13 years old. That takes a lot of patience. Yeah, sometimes we would have camps with mixed ages, yeah. you know, like we're like kindergarten through 13 years old, and that's... Wow, that was interesting. <laughs> that was interesting. But I loved the teaching. I loved teaching, but it got to the point where I, I had to explore my own creativity again because I felt like I had kind of lost, lost that because I had put so much into, you know, my lesson plans, you know, with the teaching. Um, so I decided, made a decision, and I did it, and I'm, I'm, ex I'm so excited, very happy that I... Uh, that I did it, yeah, and uh, yeah. So here I am now, uh, having a great time, just doing my own thing. I guess you'd call it. So <laughs> that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, I can see a lot of '80s inspiration now that you're, you're yeah, a lot of that type of inspiration in in, I love in your the '80s. 80s. <laughs> yes, you know, there's so many art, so many of us that were '80s children that the influence was a perfect time of influence for anything that's pop culture. Um, that in the early 90s to me was the epitome of, of what we consider pop culture, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and they call it old school, but old school is good. I mean, it was a mixture of art and music and everything kind of had a conglomeration of that time in the 80s. So, right. it's, But you do see influence uh, in your artwork, from the basket especially. So, I mean, I see a lot of it now that you've mentioned that. So, so your process, walk me through a little bit of your process. Uh, I'm, constant, can, yeah. I'm constantly, this this doesn't shut off. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I'm constantly, even if I'm not working on paintings, I may be sitting on social media and I'm getting, just looking at different artists and getting some inspiration. That kind of gets me off my butt and doing something when I see what someone is doing. I'm so, okay. And I'll just have an idea, maybe. Sometimes the idea does not translate as well from here to the canvas. Yeah. And I'll get frustrated, uh, which I think that's part of the, the artist's temperament. Uh, I'll like, okay, this is not turning out the way that I had envisioned it. So I'll, I'll just kind of step away for a little while and collect myself. And I'll just go back in. And the only way I can explain it is it's something comes over me and I just I have to 
emerge myself right away. Yeah, that's my process. I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll take an idea, or maybe I'll have an idea, and I'll just go for it. Yeah. If it doesn't turn out, I'll modify it a little bit, go back and tweak it. But I think that's what it is. I, I think I, I think I have these creative surges that I know at that time I've got to do what I need to do, and I, I just ask everyone, okay, just please. It's a universal creative energy that's flowing. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I talked I, about that a little bit in the past one. Yeah, yeah, I really can't explain it. It just it just kind of overcomes me. Yeah. And, uh, palette wise, because your palette palette's broad, colorful but broad. Do, I mean, is there something like the one behind you, which I love? Okay. It's got those teals. This is this is my favorite palette of, of anything. It's teals and blues and that. Uh, I love it's this. so peaceful to me. But what I mean, you know, does a palette in is it is a palette representative of what your mood is at the time? Do you or have you even gone into it that deep? Because I know I, a lot of I artists think just do so. it. I think so because I'm really right now. I feel I'm really drawn to this color palette right now. It's really taken over me a little bit. I, I can't explain it. These aquas, these cool colors, these blues, these maybe little tinges of violets, you know, mixed yeah. with some blues. Yeah, that's. It's soothing to me, I guess I'd say. Yeah, very much. You know, even though, and in, in, in the one piece behind you, even though there's a, a there's a chaos within it, there is something soothing about about looking at the misty feel of it, but also at the hard edge of it and the graphic aspect of it, the color palette of that. And it's it's amazing. The past five years, this color palette has been very. Um, very prevalent in a lot of artists' work, and and as as artists, I think we pick up on a collective energy that you know okay. that, that happens, and you're like, "Well, I've been doing that, but it looks similar or that color." I think we all put it out there in the in the atmosphere, and we're, we're pulling <coughs> down. Right. I, yeah, so but um, so how how do you find being um, an LGBTQ artist and it might not have anything to do with your process right um, but how do you feel it is how do you feel about it living in the south you've lived in Birmingham all these years oh, right, yeah. do you do you find it welcoming to it or do you find any type of I have not received any negativity good that's backlash. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty open as far as in my personal life, uh, even on and social you're media, you're married. I'm married. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. your husband's name is is John. Is John? Yeah, okay. we've been together almost uh, 24 years. Congratulations! Thank you. Congratulations! Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, what were we saying? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but you don't find that there's resistance because of no, no, because I've really, actually, I've encountered a lot of uh, really nice clients that I've met that have started collecting my work. And uh, like I said, I'm very open about it on social media. I don't have anything to hide. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm quirky. I'm a little out there. I'm, I'm way out there. And uh, hey, yeah. that's a good thing. That there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I encourage. <laughs> I always tell you know, embrace, little ones to embrace your inner weirdness. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, amen to that. I, going back to what you were talking about, the teacher and around the border of the test. You know, for any teacher that watches this. <laughs> And I know teaching is much different than it was 40 years ago, 35 years ago. Yeah. But don't limit your students. I know you may have a curriculum that you go and do not limit because it, it. I, I had a teacher stop me from doing something similar to that. I mean, you know that, yeah. and it does. Mine went a little bit further because she got so upset with it. Um, <laughs> it, it, it. It's amazing you can hear that adult voice in the back of your head when you're, you know. Thankfully, you get over it. Oh but, yeah, yeah. And it's so wonderful that your parents encourage this. I think especially now during this this period of COVID that's going on, that parents encouraging creativity, and I think it's becoming more prevalent in younger couples. I, I agree. I, I hear about it and I see it, but the creativity of just letting the children do what they do to be yeah. who they are, I think that's fantastic. Because we had to, I don't know about you, but I, you also have to, I had to overcome, um, I came out very early, but I still had to overcome that stigma that, I put on myself and then, oh, yeah. then the artists and learning all those things in progression that I, I, I you think it influenced my artwork. I would like to say it did. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, I can remember I wasn't always together, <laughs> but I mean, you know, growing up in age the, is a wonderful thing, <laughs> but growing up in, in Alabama, especially during the, uh, 
realizing in the late seventies and eighties that you know I'm not exactly like Joe football over here, yeah. and uh, that was hard. It was hard coming to terms with who I am yeah. at that point, especially high school. I mean, you know, it's high school. Um, but as I got older, you know, I mean, I'm so comfortable now. Yeah. I don't care, you know, you like me, you like me, you don't, yeah. I'm not losing any sleep over it. So. And I think that's the reason I bring this up, because I want people to see, you know, there's so many creative people out there that, you know, the few people that this does reach or, or whatever does happen within, and in this, I, I would like people to know, no matter what age they are, but especially young people, that, you know, it's it's okay just to be yourself. And there's still a lot of kids out there, no matter how open things are that are but it's so improving and, and my perception of coming back home to the south was so mistaken because i had come back thinking okay i'm just i'm gonna have to you know i've been out since i was 12. Yeah. um and i i'm a very vigilant person when it, i i'm very proud of who i am and sure. almost to the point of being militant some sometimes unfortunately and i'm a big guy and yeah you know i play football and all that but um <laughs> you know Coming, I'm surprised how welcoming and warm and the South is. That I, I think I fell into the fact of believing what I had heard, even you know being away for so long. Sure. So yeah, there so. is a misconception about the South even today. Uh, you know, even on Facebook or yeah. social media, you hear people putting down the South because of current. Things environment going on, yeah, environment. Yeah. and yeah. I, you know i always try to stand up for you know at least my home state and i was like you know not not everybody is narrow-minded and yeah like that so i mean and more so and more so i think you know it it, it the, the state it but if you've never been to alabama come to alabama because it's one of the most beautiful places beautiful. And uh, me being from North Carolina, uh, me living in North Carolina for so many years, you know, we had the ocean and the mountains, and then I thought, oh, this is so fun. It's nothing like this because you still have the mountains. You because I was realizing driving up to Birmingham this morning, it, it still gave you that feel. But the beaches in Alabama are the most beautiful beaches anywhere. Can't be that white, white sand, sand, that turquoise. Because your what your artwork, some of it, those colorations remind me of that. So. I love the beach. Do you? Do you? Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. I love the beach. We growing up, I mean, that was our family vacation was going down to Gulf Shores, okay. you know, Panama City, Destin. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the white sand. I've been all over, you know, different parts of the country and the world, and it just brown sand just doesn't compare to <laughs> white sand. I'm sorry, you, sorry. <laughs> no, it's a trip. Well, I went to, you know, North Carolina's got some beautiful beaches, but the first time we went to one of those beaches, I mean, my perception is, you know, I was raised in the South and raised in Alabama, so that <laughs> I was like, whoa, this this is not quite the Different. same thing. It is. It, it it was like the Riviera. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, Bobby, uh, is any of your work being shown in any local gallery, or do you, it's just collectors? Just collectors and uh, most, mostly social media. Okay. Um, I found right now, I haven't found the right gallery that I feel that would fit my style. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of going through that right now. Yeah. I don't really know where I would fit in because uh, I'm not traditional by yeah. any means. What? And again, your artwork is one of the, it, it, it inspires by the look. That was the one Thank thing you. when we we contacted each other and I started looking at you. I was like, it made me it made me smile. And I tell you, this okay. piece, and we'll look at this in a few minutes. <laughs> that piece to me, I, it, love, that. I love that piece. <laughs> and, and then I started looking at, at all of your layering of color and all <laughs> And it makes me happy. So I think there's a gallery out there that would love to have your pieces, but at the same time, you you, you know, the private collectors are probably going, don't do that because then he'll raise his prices. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> but it, it, you have a great, great feel to all of your artwork. So I appreciate it. So if somebody wants to contact you about any of the artwork they see on here, how can they contact you? Uh, I have a website, uh, uh, www.bobcardesigns.com. And I'm on uh, social media, uh, Bob M. Carr, Bob Carr Designs. You can find me. Are you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. Yeah. And it's at Bob Carr? Yeah, uh, okay. at, Bob, at Bob M. Carr. Bob M. Carr. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so guys, um, Bob, thank you so much. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank um, you. we decided about, and before I get it about the mask and stuff, we had a conversation about that, about <laughs> mask and staying distance and, and, and we've already done our hands and everything. So, yep. so please don't think that we're not taking that in consideration when I do that. Um, and if anybody ever wanted to wear a mask or I felt like I needed to, I would. So. Guys, um, it's Gilcroy with Out in Five. You can find me at gilcroy.com, at Tanker Blue, and at Gilcroy on Instagram, at Gilcroy on Twitter, and also on Facebook. So, guys, again, Bob, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Thank you. You, you guys are going to see a lot of the artwork that is interlaced within the interviews. So, contact Bob, get in touch with him. His pieces are fantastic, and hopefully, Bob, your stuff would be great. I'm working on a mural project that I want several artists to be involved in the mural project doing small six by six spaces. Yeah. Your 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 way of doing would be great for the mural. So I'd love to talk to you. When I get that firmed up a little bit more, okay. and I talked a little bit about it last week, but uh, okay. it'd be hopefully we'll be in Montgomery in an area doing a, about 15 artist murals of small size. Yeah, so, awesome. all right. Thank you guys so much for showing up, and please share us and talk about us. And again, all Alabama artists, anybody that wants to be part of this, please let me know because we need to get together, especially during this time. So thank you, and you guys have a great day.